What is up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Rare Wednesday edition of the Nick Club Wrestling Happy Hour. I am your virtual bartender, Mr. Nick Teodoro. Joining me, as always, is my tag team partner in life, my wife, Miss Nicole. Nicole, what are you drinking? Oh, you know, the usual Tito, some cranberry, some orange juice. Awesome, awesome. Mr. Nick? Mr. Nick's having his wine, as usual. If you're new here, please, as usual, please like, subscribe, hit the old Samoan spike on the like button. So today, we were going to do a very special episode for WrestleMania. Being that WrestleMania is in Philadelphia this year, we thought we'd do something a little special and change it up a little bit. This week, we're doing four shows? I guess, I guess like, yeah, we're going to be four shows. Very scheduled. Find that below. So we're looking to do four shows this week and kind of mix it up. So we're going to have our normal show on Friday, predicting WrestleMania, all that fun stuff. And then we're going to do the recap on Sunday of night one of WrestleMania and then Monday night of, of night two. But uh, before we get to it, I don't want to bury the lead. Uh, I know we know what you're all here for. Unfortunately, we have some on. Un- Fortunate news, obviously, by the little bit of delay, we tried to wait as long as possible. But PJ Polacco, just incredible, unfortunately had to reschedule. Um, as he told me, he's in the hospital and getting some work done on his on his ankle, which looks uh, absolutely terrible. So we wish him the best in, in getting better. So we're going to look to reschedule that interview in the near future. So stay tuned for that. Um, so again, apologies for all of you who who waited and submitted your questions. Those are still going to be in the queue for when we do have Justin on um, as we as we go through. So that being said, well, I just want to oh. thank everyone who did submit a question, reached out, shared the page, liked the page, and was like super supportive. Uh, we appreciate you guys a lot. Absolutely, we can't do it without you. It's so much fun Love having the guys. interaction. So we appreciate that. Mm-hmm. So we figured do a little bit shorter a show, kind of. Make the most of, of this. Anyway, we're sitting at the bar. I already have a cocktail, so might as well do this thing. So <laughs> maybe a, an abbreviated, different type of show. So what I figured we'd do is just kind of throw everything out there this week. We have no. <laughs> we normally have some some graphics and things like that. We have nothing for this. Yeah. This is more grassroots podcasting <laughs> on yeah, YouTube. Like our, our Friday show will be like our, our major predictions. We announce the cards. We're going to run through the cards. We'll do our predictions, talk about what's going on. So, you know, we'll hold predictions for Friday. But if you want to talk anything SmackDown, Raw, CM Punk's interview, you know, whatever's kind of, you know, tell us what you're thinking once you're drinking. So if you throw that link, well, it's actually in the description, but Mm -hmm. the link that I just put up there is the call in link for everyone. So if you want to just chat about wrestling, old school wrestling, WrestleMania this weekend. Hall of Fame coming up. They just announced the Rock's grandma is going to be inducted because she was a promoter in Hawaii. That was like her territory. Um, so now that's rounded out the the Hall of Fame. So. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, actually. So so today was the first. Oh, I don't want to get it wrong. WWE on Twitter speed. What are they called speed matches? Oh yeah, the speed matches. So it was actually pretty interesting to watch because I was expecting like or what I'm going to call like the squash champion, whoever wins that match. Cause like it literally, so it was Ricochet and oh my gosh, Dragon Lee, which is really good, good match. Yeah. Super, again, I, I was at work all day. I haven't watched anything wrestling today. It's like perfectly what? suited for them. Um, so if you get a chance, go on X Twitter, whatever it's called. Now. Well, also what they were saying for those speed matches, the kind of producer or book, you know, book, agent like Peter Dunn helped map out those matches. So I think that's really cool that uh, Peter Dune is doing some like behind the scenes work, yeah. even though they're short little. I think they were originally five minutes and cut down to three, I believe. Where the original format was five and they cut it down to three. No, but yeah. I think it's interesting. It's that the ADD Championship of <laughs> WWE that Pete Dunn kind of put those matches together. I just the only thing I didn't like is literally like, and I get it, but like the the end of that match that I, that I saw was like Ricochet won, which deserves so he needs. He deserves a win, although Dragon Lee's gotten a big boost. But um, what I thought was interesting is that he won with, like, one second left. And, and again, like, not that you're going to do it, but I guess you can get a lot of spots in in, in one three-minute match. You, yeah. You'd be surprised. So. Yeah, I wonder, like I said, there's, like, a 
in like a tournament or like a champion? Like, are they going to get like an actual belt? I think. Like, I don't know. I, 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 two hundred five belt. Like, I don't probably. know. Yeah, it seems like something that would be good for the crew. And then the I don't know if you saw about that. Um, Peter, Peter Piper Niven tweeted, "It's like, oh, three, three, um, three minute matches. Our time to shine, girls. Oh wait, it's not for us." <laughs> and then people like retweeted or reposted or whatever and tagged Triple H in it. And she's like, hey, like, don't call me up to my boss. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of, you know, because I feel like lately we've gotten a lot of three minute, five minute women's matches. So I think, I think it was kind of funny that she tweeted that. I think it'd be then, interesting to see, like, it, it's a good way to get protected <laughs> people on. on no. Yeah. So. But, um, you yeah, know, I thought that was pretty interesting. Obviously, this week awesome. going into WrestleMania. He's going to be – it's pretty exciting with Rock, Roman, everything else going on. I expect AEW tonight to have a pretty big card or at least a pretty good, nice showing mm-hmm. um, on that front. Actually, that's a good question. I was going to say, what are the – I'm like, I'm blanking because I was – again, I, I have all these questions that I wanted to talk to PJ about, and that was our main focus. So, sorry a little all over the place, but we, we promised you a show. This is the ADD show. That we, we're giving you. <laughs> so, yeah, call – come on. Regulars, come on, call in. We, we, we could go only – we could talk – that's the fun – the beauty of this is we could talk wrestling all day long. So, we were talking about, what would, would we do? Yeah, we're just going to keep we can, talking I like we always planned- do. I don't know what we're doing for food yet, so tell me what you want to eat. Should I make a trifle again? My St. Patrick's Day. For me? Cake. Yes. My St. Patrick's just for me. cake wasn't good. <laughs> Strictly just for me. <laughs> um, let's see. Dynamite for you. Announce matches. Here we go. Pro Wrestling Torch. Thunder Rosa against Mariah May, which I. Can we just talk about, since we're going to pivot to AEW anyway? Mm hmm. Thunder Rosa is kind of boring to me. She I know you never boring. really were. It was a fan. Um, again, I'm not. I don't really. But I'm assuming this is setting up for Thunder Rosa. Tony is Tony going to get involved? She doesn't really necessarily maybe get involved in uh, Mariah May's matches. Is Mariah? May, she's still coming out looking like Tony. Old. Yeah, dub, I think so, yeah. WD, well, last I saw like last WWE week. WWE Tony Storm. Oh, okay. So well, Lisa one? wants to say hi. She's sad. No, Justin. Pr- I know. I know, Lisa. Next sign. But we will have. It's see. That's the beauty of this. So it was to be the first, but now possibly won't be the first of of many. So we're looking at some other people, some local it's New Jersey been folks. So we've networking. been reaching out. So don't you know, worry. It's gonna be a cool fun. caller. <laughs> <laughs> throwing speaking of calls, throwing up that link again. Who's calling in? <laughs> but now we are. We're calling so Nicole stops making weird hand gestures. <laughs> That's fair. Will uh, interesting. Will Osprey versus Powerhouse Hobbs. His first match with an actual like heavyweight. With the big one. Yeah. Big meaty meat man, or sorry, meat planet is what Wade Barrett has been calling them. He's like. Bigums. Mm. So a meat planet. That should be fun. Something I feel like something Speaking of that, can we get Big E just back in some like I not in like an like just being a, a manager or something for New um, Day? Um I know they're doing a press con ooh, I think oh is that I there's like a press conference they're doing or he was in a graphic that he's gonna be there at Mania. I don't necessarily know if it's the kickoff show or the kickoff to the kickoff, because they're doing something, I don't know if it's yeah, no, he always does. Like every, I feel like every mania or like summer time, so he's always on the panel. Oh, but like, you know what we can't. Well, I don't know, if it, but we did watch the um, Bray Wyatt documentary last night. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I cried that. my eyeballs out. I feel like Nick kept looking at me, and I'm like literally grabbing tissues and like. We oh. cried everything. I mean, it was sad. It was super sad. But it was just like they did a lot of be like a lot. I'm surprised they did this a lot. It flashed up like never. Uh, before seeing footage, seeing interviews, seeing like him like tape recording, because apparently it seems like uh, Mike Rotunda, his dad, IRS, who's going to the Hall of Fame this year, is running a book. And Micah, mm. Bray Wyatt's sister, Mike Rotunda's daughter. Who I thought was supposed to be a wrestler. I so she, I, like, I feel like she dabbled and dipped her toes in and I was like, maybe not. Um, but she was doing like recordings of like family members to get transcripts for the book. 
And then she had this beautiful thing that that Wyndham had said that like what he wants his legacy to be. And it was basically like if I'm, you know, doesn't necessarily want to be known for wrestling, that he was like a good man, that like it's something that his kids and JoJo could be proud of. Mm. <laughs> but definitely recommend it. It's a little long. Well, it's like two hours, but you, they talk to his mom, his sister Micah, uh, Taylor Rotenda, aka Bo Dallas's brother, talk to IRS, they talk to also going to the Hall of Fame, his partner, Barry Wyndham. Obviously, that's very why it's real. His first name is Wyndham because uh, Barry, his mother is a Wyndham. Yeah, try not to give away spoilers on anyone who's who <laughs> hasn't seen it yet. No, I'm trying like because I'm trying like because I called I called I called the ending. I called the ending. Oh, well, I'm just saying the ending. I was just talking about who the interview and then it was random like. They did a quick interview with Ric Flair, which I thought was weird. Like Hulk Hogan, which I thought was yeah, weird. Yeah, Hulk Hogan was in there a lot. A lot. And I was like, and he's okay. like, you're the great character, brother. I would have like, loved to pin him. I knew he was special. I can't. That's a terrible I would Hulk never Hogan. put him over, brother. Brother, brother, brother. <laughs> um, But like they have like Big E talk and Seth Rollins talk. And they talked about when Brody passed. And I was just like, and then you have JoJo and they're showing um, the four kids. He's got three girls and a boy. So I'm going to chime in here and cut you off for oh, one please, second I mean. because as we bring up the Bray Wyatt documentary and as you bring up the one, the only, the legend, Hulk Hogan, uh-huh. I want to bring in one of our regulars to talk about because I know he's talked about this before. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the legend. He doesn't put anyone over. <laughs> brother, brother. No one gets over on Hulk Homan. Not going to work for me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? What's happening? What are you drinking? What are you thinking on a Wednesday happy hour? I'm not drinking. Sorry about that. Because I kind of like actually forgot that we were actually like doing this because I haven't been here in so long. So, but I know. Where you been? Oh, you've been filming another movie? <laughs> well, you, you come back just in time for the ratings. <laughs> See, I have my alter ego of Hulk Hogan, and then my regular is just being a stupid dad. So that was pretty much kind of what I've been doing. <laughs> See, well, you're drinking for Saturday. Well, I feel like I feel like the regular Hulk Hogan kind of got that stupid dad part down too. Did you see what happened with the summer or something? I know. <laughs> yes, I will be. I will be drinking Saturday, so don't worry about that. Book my couch, <laughs> obviously, as usual. <laughs> so. Already booked. No ways. Yeah, the fire. <laughs> this is what we love about the show: the Firefly Flun House. I can't say that three times fast. Firefly Funhouse comes to life at yes. WrestleMania in the paper. So. <laughs> so, but I did watch the um, I did watch the Bray Wyatt. That yeah. was amazing. Uh, I, I actually had me like at the end was I, I and I I'm emotional to begin with. Like I was in tears. Like I was just I was mm. bawling at the end. It really was like it, crazy. Yeah, it, it's pretty crazy. Like just to see. Like again, the evolution of a, of a character. Like, it, it reminded me so much, even, like, obviously when he's alive, like, the Mick Foley, like, the three faces of Foley, like, the different characters he was able to pull. But over such a long period of time for Foley versus, like, I feel like Braves were, were over, like, a seven-year period where he had The Fiend. You know, he had his old Swamp the character. You know, yeah, like, all that stuff. Like, he, he went through th- so many iterations of his yeah, character. Yeah, Swamp, and then you had him, whatever he was doing with uh, Woken Matt Hardy when they were tag champs. And then he had the presenter guy, like the Mr. Rogers guy in the, the fun house. It's yeah, show. I mean, it's his money. It's just to just to watch that and see his mind. Like, it's just to see his mind and have like other people just say like how it was. It was amazing. Like, I I, I went back to back. I watched the. Uh, uh, I fell asleep on Sunday, so I didn't watch the rain. So I actually watched the rains one right into the uh, hmm. right into the Bray Wyatt one, like back to back. <laughs> so. Yeah, it was interesting. The only thing that I found kind of kind of weird, like not weird, is just like, and I hate about these like all the time, like documentary. It's it felt so much like some people were trying to take credit. Like I remember that character was was like I helped them do that. Like it felt oh, like Triple so. H, uh, Triple H was being Triple, Triple H. H was definitely like kind of like not passive aggressive. Yeah, well, yeah, like passive aggressive. Like sometimes he was kind of difficult, and sometimes it's like reining him back to let it know that like you could still do this. And like even some of the people like around were like, well, we did this together, and we all did this together, and like. I felt really bad for like his his I don't want to call him like seamstress, but the, his costume designer, whatever the guy's oh, name was, like Frank. Effects guy. Yeah, because I felt like that was like his war. Like he came to life. Like he created all that stuff, and like just the I don't want to spoil the the dynamic of like some of the other creations of what he was trying to do before Bray passed. 
was yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it was it, it was that was a that was a really good game. Yeah. Yeah. So what else are you thinking this week? Anything anything going on? You watch AEW tonight? Ah, it's all it's all over the place. I've been I've been locked in like everywhere. Like <laughs> I, I must again I was on like X Twitter or whatever it was and I, I watched like had like probably like five or six clips of uh of Cody on, uh, I guess, uh, Ariel Hawani's like pod- podcast yeah. or whatever it was. Oh, I've heard, that's another great point. This is why we have callers. Wait, when yeah. Was, when was Cody on? Cody was on today. Oh, it was like yeah. literally this so they, morning. They had, they didn't, I didn't see the whole thing, but they showed, they probably kind of clipped maybe like five or six little. I want to be able to show that on here without getting yeah. copyrighted. Nice. But <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's like the biggest <laughs> thing is, is that we're going to show it. It's going to be a great segment and they're going to cut it out later. But, but yeah. <laughs> But, but he, yeah, he, he actually had a good one. The last one I watched, he said the iteration that they're doing with the uh, the final boss with the Rock. He said that he feels it's like Hollywood Hogan. Um, whenever they announced, whenever they kind of brought him out at the uh, Bash at the Beach, so um, that was that was kind of interesting the way he said that. So yeah, I mean, well, I was like with the Cody statement, it was more like. The AEW stuff, ironically, tonight as Dynamite goes on, is is he basically was was saying that like because Cody came out or Punk came out on Monday was just talking about how essentially Tony was just a terrible like he's a good nice guy but basically a terrible boss and and then like kind of trashed as much as he could within reason AEW. I don't think it was as bad as people made it out. No, but like it's it for for being under a WWE contract, you're gonna that's more than than they're gonna do. Um, they're gonna allow. So it's kind of groundbreaking or controversial in some ways, I think. But anyway, then then Cody came on and kind of like just complete opposite <laughs> of, yeah. of, of Punk. And he's just like, well, I loved what we did and like everyone there. And and he brought up basically um, the Bucks, obviously, Tony. Yep. He said, um, oh, my God, Brandy, he included in that because obviously she was a big part in the beginning. Chris Jericho. And there was another name I'm blanking on that was I couldn't figure out who it was. He actually was on. Um, I guess he's making the rounds, obviously, and he was on ESPN the the whatever first. I think first take this morning or whatever. Well, I think it was first take. And uh, he actually they asked him about finishing the story. He goes, "If I don't finish my story, he's like, I might as well just go into the uh, into the commentary booth." So hmm. he was like, "That was kind of interesting." <laughs> well, that's another news article that came out uh, in the last like week or two. Is that Cody Rhodes has actually signed an extension? past yes. his 40th birthday and because he originally said he wanted to retire b- by his 40th birthday because i think he always wants uh, he definitely has i feel like a, a career or wants to try and do something in politics after wwe something along those lines i know he's, he had that whole gimmick in uh, was it new japan or roh when he would it was one of the- he's already got the tour bus he just has to change his name though i don't think i don't think going on tour and saying i'm the american nightmare <laughs> <laughs> that, was another, that, was another, that was another thing that came up on the uh Ariel Hawani podcast. They, he, he asked him about the uh, uh, the contract extent, the contract, and he asked him. Obviously, he's like, "Oh, he's like, can you tell me the uh, can you tell me the years?" And Cody's like, "No, I can't tell you that." He's like, "Well, can you tell me the amount?" And obviously, Cody was like, "No, I can't tell you that either." And he's like, "Well, can you tell me anything?" And yeah. He goes. Uh, he goes. Well, I can tell you them. He goes. I can tell you them. The uh, Shohei Otani of uh, professional wrestling right now, and I was kind of like, so he probably got a g- good amount of yeah, money. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> as so, long as he knows, I mean, he, he he even when he first came over, he got a really good. Yeah, team. I mean, you got to wonder if he's. I mean, I guess he can't have more than Okada Reigns, but or like a, like probably. I mean, I don't know. And well, it'd be interesting to know how much, and and he probably loves this. I mean, just the businessman probably loves, like Okada just got thirteen million over four. Four years? I think it's four years. So he's probably and and he's gonna like draw more money, I feel like, than Okada. So and yeah. has, so especially in the United States. So like I just feel like he's probably and same thing with uh him. what's her name? And Mercedes with whatever she got and her contract. So they mm-hmm. were saying she got a huge huge deal too. So one of the highest I know, I know. I'm waiting for Tony Khan to sign me. Come on. <laughs> Just give me a cool 10 mil. I'll do it for 10. He's, I'll, I'll he's do crazy enough. He just might. <laughs> and less than Okada. But I'm right in between there and above like Jay White and all those other people. Yeah, Joe told you it's open mic night. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. 
But that's what kind of Punk said. That was like the difference. He's like, I'm into we're we're into different businesses. Like I'm, you know, drawing and making money. Yours is like putting up <laughs> matches. And yeah. He's like, that's he's like, we're not in the same business. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, just... I think it's different because he basically said that like he felt from like the jump that like the Young Bucks and that camp didn't necessarily want him there. And then mm-hmm. Cody's very much in that camp. He's still friends with the Young Bucks. He does his two sweet guns up. Like, so I think, you know, I think obviously they have very different experiences. Yeah. Ed keeps, yeah. Ed's good chiming in. He's Okada. You know, he's, he's, he's on the line. We're going to get him in. Okay. <laughs> All right, John, or Hulk, <laughs> any last <laughs> any last words before we let you go here? No, man, I'm, I'm ready. I'll see you on, uh, I think the cards, if you saw the cards, I think the cards are, uh, yeah, are pretty cool. stacked. Obviously, night two is more stacked, but. Yeah. Both, I think, are, should be very interesting, though. So. Well, save save your predictions Friday show. Friday show is all about predictions, everybody. So. Sounds good. I'll see you then. All right, John. Till next Please. time. You yep. sir, cut off. All right. Since since he's been chiming in about Matt Jackson. Oh, okay. Let's let's bring in let's bring in Ed because he, he said that. So so Ed, that the other person hey. was reading that your chat here. It said Matt Jackson's. Word. So that was the other person that you mentioned in the. Oh, interview? Dana. Yeah, Dana. yeah, 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 yeah. It was Dana. Uh, yeah, I thought I mean, it, I, no, 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 it was a male's name. It was a male's name. That's not, we're not thinking about the well, same Dana can be a male. Dana White. Oh, yeah, Dana White. No, but it wasn't like, it was like a Greg. Or like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Greg. Yeah, Cody just shouted out Greg, you know? It's our boy. Shout out to Greg. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not going to be able to watch it till Friday morning. Being in the office two days in a row really screws up the my whole life. Being in the office in general just screws up my I watched it on Reels. Yeah, but I was like, okay. Anywho, Ed, Listen, what me. Do you think, what are you drinking? Yeah, what are you thinking when you're drinking on a Wednesday? Oh, man, what am I thinking? What am I drinking? Well, currently I'm hydrating myself to the highest degree. Uh, I've got round two here of of the plague. Uh, uh, <laughs> you got the vid. Yeah, man. Once in a lifetime again. <laughs> are you are you becoming a two time no or is a three time COVID champion? Uh, two time confirmed. Two time confirmed. Probably, champ. probably three. Considering yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there, there's some like dual, dual championship that you're not really sure about in there. <laughs> I've got the honestly, it's just me with the uh, the title to dragon picture with it's, him with the uh, uh, super oh. J Cup championship or whatever. You won a tournament down in what the Panama Canal or wherever it was. <laughs> <laughs> he's got, yeah, he's got COVID titles from all around the world. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, nah, what am I thinking? Um, the Bray documentary absolutely killed me. Mm-hmm. I got like, honestly, like, like within the first 10 minutes, I'm like already tearing up. Just like watch it, watching everybody almost break. is just killed me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what hit me the hardest. And I, I would have figured it would have been like Taylor losing his mind or like, you know, Jojo losing it. They played that clip of Becky Lynch in that street fight. Like, oh, and r- right after she wins, she takes the armband off and holds it up and just, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm breaking now. But she just, like, loses it and then, like, sits down and, like, completely just shatters. Mm-hmm. That kills me every time. Yeah, that that was, yeah, that was a pretty powerful moment. I don't know. I guess, like, I feel like with Bray Wyatt, I, I grieved so much when it first happened. Because there was ne- there's not been very many, like, artists, wrestlers... Yeah. celebrities, athletes that I was, like, really, really into that, like, passed away or anything, luckily. But, you know, yeah, like, it was one of those things, like, when he, like, Nikki was upstairs, just like, and I was like, yep, and, like, we got at the same time, and it was just like, yeah. you're just you hard to just drop. Each other from them. But, like, <laughs> I think it's just like, you know, with Becky breaking, it's like, but it's not, like, wrestler-wise, no one had a bad thing to say about him. How much no. he loved everyone, how much joy he brought to everyone, how much, every, you know, you see pictures of him hugging Charlotte and how much he, like, was with Becky and all the guys. Like, besides, like, the weird stuff that Triple H said, but, like, everyone was just, like, he just brought so much love and light to the world. Yeah, and I, I think, I don't think the the, the, the Triple H stuff is, is necessarily super weird. Um, I mean, because... It's one of those things. Uh, Triple H was the guy that essentially signed him and helped him create that character, right? Because he was the one running NXT at the time. But I totally get from his standpoint of he he's the head of creative down there, right? So he's like, you know, I have the final say in, in XYZ and we're here to collaborate. And somebody being just that stubborn of like, no, we're going to do this this way. It's like, but 
but I'm your boss kind of thing. Yeah. So I get where he's going to a point. And I, and, and I do get where he also, on the other hand, is like, these ideas are crazy and amazing. And I want this to succeed. And I want you to succeed. Yeah. But yeah, there, I mean, there had to have been like a happy medium somewhere. And I think that's where he's trying to go. Not to the same level, because I know he was a complete, and I I, I, I see, I'm not going to look at her because she's going to make a face as soon as right I say now. this. But it reminded me of back in the 90s when Name Redacted used to have to reel in Vince Russo. Mm. And used to always, they talked about that for years about like how mm. Russo like had all those creative ideas, but Vince was like, all right, calm down. Like he got to like, he had just enough to just kind of like pull it back on him. And that's what oh, yeah. Successful. Oh, and it totally worked. And and, and it's funny because like a uh, friend of a friend, um, actually shout off shout outs to uh tough Tim Hughes. Uh he was working out in uh Russo's Colorado, Indy. Uh and he was like, Yeah, pretty much every story you, you hear about Russo is absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> like the guy the guy uses bro as a comma. I mean, if that wasn't already uh you know <laughs> shown through through his own stuff, but like he I just has these absolutely ridiculous, mm -hmm. ridiculous ideas. Yeah, like, well, I mean, that was the whole, he got into the whole, what do they call it? Not, I don't want to call it trash TV, but it was like the 90s, like. Oh, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, that was close. Yes. I had some sort of rhyme. But yeah, like that that idea of like just only film something for short periods of time and like skipping over and editing and cutting really quickly to different things. Yeah, he, he was all about that. No, but, and especially for the time being, it totally made sense. What do you think? Any 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 thoughts on AEW tonight? Are you gonna watch AEW? Um, that's a great question. Because for for me, just AEW as a whole feels like you know one step forward, two steps back. Mm -hmm. And it it it's rough because again, it, it, like we like I just said with you know Triple H wanting people to succeed, I really want AEW to to succeed. But it's like, you know, Tony Khan's got a big announcement. We're bringing in you know we're we're bringing in Sasha Banks or uh, whatever she's going by now. Um, and it's like, okay, does that. Does that move the needle? We're bringing in Okada. Does that move the needle? Mm. Like you made such a big deal about bringing in Jay White. And like you said last week, Jay White's a trio ship. <laughs> What's mm. the guy done since he's been here? Well, actually tonight, nice segue. Jay White will have arguably the biggest match of his career against daddy ass Billy Gunn. <laughs> also, Because that's what I want to see. I want to see 60 year old daddy Billy ass. Gunn. Oh. Billy Gunn's gonna beat him. I hope so. I don't. I honestly, I, I hope he beats him like he beat up uh, Darby Allen. Mm. Do you guys remember that match? Yes. So like Darby, Dar, Darby, we, we was on his way up, and uh, Billy Gunn was just no selling his entire offense, throwing him around like a child. It was great. You mean Darby was on his way to his next injury? I feel like. He's <laughs> and that's the problem with half the friggin' roster over there. Yeah. Like. Stop moving off stuff. I hate to, it, it's like, it's one of those two that like, you know, we, we had the, you know, you, you had your AW four pillars, right? The show's better without them. Mm -hmm. I don't think any all of them. I, well, no, sorry. I should take that back. MJF is a pillar. And I was about to say, and I, and I love MJF. Absolutely love MJF. But like the show's better off without them. It's better. I would without, argue it's better that, without the young bucks too. Get the bucks out of here. Well, they're, they're new characters. I cannot stand it. And then maybe that's the goal, but like, that's the point. Oh, that's hundred percent. The point I actually, I, this is like the only time I've watched them. I'm like, this is hilarious. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Hell them, them beating up sting with uh, the white suits. And then, you know, they, 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 they had the white suits on to, to, to beat up sting. And then they were covered in his blood. Fantastic. So, I thought it was gross that they, they wore it the next like three shows, but like, <laughs> I, I like the idea. Well, <laughs> You bring up a, a good point. I don't know. This struck with me because you talk about the pillars and like, I think to be honest over, over Guevara whatever and, and Sammy Guevara. Well, Darby, Darby's getting up there. If he could stay healthy, he probably could have, he has more of a chance than the other three. He should also I, stop being a sex pest, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but oh, yeah. oh, well, I would that. argue that hook is more of a pillar than them. both. Yeah, dude, send hook. Brings me into tonight's little segue. Apparently, they announced that Chris Jericho is calling out Hook tonight, which I'm very confused already because I, I don't remember why. Now, wasn't he his manager or trying yeah, to be his he was manager? Like, oh, I could be your mentor. I don't remember what Hook said. I don't like I hope it's a no. No, no, he's like, he's like, 
he's like basically was like, oh, I'm gonna make a good point. But he said like like all like he put his chin out like a tough guy. And was like, Sorry. Mm. Hook and solo <laughs> Sokoa should not be talking. <laughs> Yeah. I think Hook should have done the uh, TNA Hogan, like stroking his Fu Manchu. <laughs> I think <laughs> out honestly, his lips, you know, if Solo ever talks, he should just talk like a, with a Mike Tyson voice. <laughs> it's not he talked the other day. He talked on. But no, no, I don't care what he talks like in real life, like with his normal voice. He should talk with a Mike Tyson voice. I think it would be epic. <laughs> just give him something ridiculous. Another person speaking of just segue, not really wrestling related, but Mike Tyson's facing Jake Paul. Yes. The younger of the two balls. Piss out of him. I'd be. I, it would actually make me happy as someone who's getting older in life just to see that. <laughs> it's I like mean, Mike Tyson is still got it. What is he now? Like sixty? Almost fifty-eight. Oh, let's see, Mike Tyson. Let's uh, back check you. I have a feeling that fight's going to be a work. Just Fifty-seven. The, the oh. rules are very weird, but uh, we'll see. I hope not. What is that? Uh, it's supposed to be a boxing match between uh, Jake no. Paul and Mike Tyson. Yeah, she said when. when. Oh, when? Sorry. Uh, some sometime in July. Oh, that far. Oh, I thought that the way we've been, we've been talking about it, I thought it was just like kind of like after media. Well, no, boxing they always announce it. That's like six months of training. Have you seen Rocky or any of the Rockies? Should I be a CM Punk? He has to go like it? Mike Tyson. <laughs> and Jake and Paul have to go up into like the woods in Siberia for the next six months. Meat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> yeah, you gotta get an old guy to make a run after a chicken. <laughs> exactly. That's ex- it's exactly. Oh God, that's what, that's like, exactly what's going on chain. right now. But he's like, got the chicken, got the chicken. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> yes. I hate Austin. I hate Austin. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Uh, <laughs> good times. Good times. Uh, oh, I have to find that now. I'm gonna find that video. I know. Well, I don't, you know, I don't like giving him anything on our show, but that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ed, before we let you go, any 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 last thoughts on the uh, on the week? Well, well, you can give us your predictions on Friday because we still got the Friday show. But Ooh. what do you think now? Yeah, that that's that, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I mean, honestly, though, uh, I'm just excited for Mania because I have no clue. I have no clue, and that's that's the best because it makes me feel like a kid again. You know, mm-hmm. it is. That's what's great about like I felt like the Rumble the last like four probably four years. I never knew who was winning. I had no idea. Like, I remember, I forget what year it was. Whatever year Seamus won, I knew he was winning. Because he came, yeah, but like, this is, whatever. So it's what, 2008? But like, you just knew he was winning because of the way, like, you always had one superstar who comes out and it's like, it's like October, September, and they're not doing shit. And they're like, I can't wait. And I'm, I'm entering myself into the Royal Rumble three months before it even happens. <laughs> and I'm so focused on WrestleMania. You're like, well, this guy's clearly going to win. <laughs> like, <laughs> know, like that, that just like, I feel like we always had somebody in like, there was a period of time for like a five year, six year window where you're just like, I know who's building the momentum. And yeah, it's, it's that guy, you know? Yeah. And they have some stupid, like throw, not stupid, but like throw away, throw away feud that they have on like, whatever it is, like with some mid card guy that they're going to just keep beating just to keep their momentum kind of like, honestly, kind of like money in the bank. In and way. it's, it's funny you say that. Cause before, before you guys uh, throw me on out of here, uh, what happens with Damian priest this weekend? Anything? I don't care. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, <laughs> tell me how you really feel. I just don't, I don't see him. It, I'm hoping Cody wins. I don't see him cashing in on Cody. Are you really going to cash it on Drew McIntyre? Feels a little icky, especially they just announced that Glasgow show. Mm. It, yeah, it's only it's only Seth. Are you gonna go down to NXT and challenge Ilya? Like, ooh, I mean, I'm here for that match. It's probably fun. Definitely yeah. give me spooky Roman versus Ilya. Well, what if? What if in some weird way? I wonder. Uh, no, no, that doesn't make sense. Or could you? No, yeah. Oh, could you, what if Saturday night, in some weird convolution of that match? Because there's two champions in it. Not not that he's gonna cash in on Roman, but like you're not gonna have Damian I don't know. interrupt a rock match. No, 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 no. But imagine if he Rock's did. Like, imagine if like he cashed in on Seth in that tag match. Right. Yeah, well, like, that's thing. It's like, it's like something like the rock is like upset about whatever. And the, remember the rock's the final boss. So like there's all like these things like remember how 
Vince did so many years ago, like, Del Rio, get him out here and cash it in on, when Punk, when Punk won. Like, that whole thing, we don't want Punk to win. So get in here and cash it in. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things where, like, he gets pissed off and he just wants hard. I yeah, no, no. Drew, Drew deserves to win the belt, but, like, I don't know. It's just so, so many, like, he... I don't want to see Damian Priest as a champion. He reminds me so much, and I like this guy more now, but I still just like, eh. When he, Baron Corbin and Damian Priest are on the same level to me. It's just like, I like, well, same level in terms of like how I felt about Baron Corbin like four, five, six when years ago. When he had the briefcase? Um, I forgot he had that. When he had the, the re... What? When it, he wasn't he the first, or was, no, or was that Sandow? I guess Sandow oh, was the first Sandow one. Was the first, yeah, Sandow was the first one to fail. Then I think then Baron, yes, you're right. Sandow, then I think oh, Baron uh, was the second yes, one. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, like, I don't know. Just, just like, his whole, like, leading up to that and after that, like, everything with him was like, he's going to be this this mega star. Like, I knew NXT, they were, like, they gave him a nice entrance. It was like, I he had, like, three matches, it felt like, in NXT. He didn't know shit about him. He came up, and then they gave him a mega push. I was like, he's he, boring. He was always in a hot tub with ladies. <laughs> I really liked Baron Corbin in NXT, but now yeah. He, so he or, or beforehand, um, because he only wrestled like thirty second matches. Like yeah. he he would show up and the crowd would count, and he'd he'd take people out like thirty four uh, uh, uh like like they're like thirty four seconds right. So mm-hmm. like that was a lot of fun, but as soon as you you had him wrestle any any longer than that, it was like oh we see why you were, you were having this guy squash dudes like yeah. I didn't know him to be in a roster and I never got better. He's two great he has moves. two of the best moves. Yeah. Which, deep six, I think. What was I watching that I saw Deep Six just nah. It might have been my video game too. Yeah, deep six <laughs> and deep are so fun. Yeah, like his 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 move list is so awesome. Like it's, it's similar his... to the blue thunder bomb, actually. It's a very like it's probably the same move. <laughs> God, here we go. Oh gosh. Sounds like the ordinator to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before we let you go, we got the call in line there. Ed, any last thoughts before we kick you out and, and put you in the drunk tank? No, just have fun, guys. Can't say anything bad. Thanks for having me. Anytime. It's a pleasure. You are cut off. Next up, we have two more in the <laughs> call queue. Yeah, I know. It's been a fun call night. This is like a friend's hang tonight, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for staying with us. We would love you guys. Yeah. Bring on. Who, is, who we got? Who's up? I don't know. Well, you got to pick one. Um, get pick a number between one and ten. No, well, it, uh... <laughs> what? I, no, because I think who should be our closer? There's no. We're both. We're all closers. Everyone's everyone's calling in. I don't know. Just pick one. All right, we'll bring her on. Ladies first. Yeah, yeah. Chivalry is not dead on this podcast. <laughs> Debatable, but let's bring her in. The scribe. Lisa, Lisa, the author. Lisa! What up? <laughs> How are you? I love, I love you, Nicole. I love your face when Nick was like, Shiver's not dead. You're like, mm. Not in this house. I mean, I still hold the door. <laughs> Listen, I opened the show with what, we, what will you be having? So I was very chivalrous. <laughs> Ladies first. I love you guys. We love you. What are you thinking? What are you drinking? What do you got for us? Well, I'm drinking water out of my Godzilla cup. Well, nice. Of course. I expect nothing less. Of course. Because who, who needs a Stanley when you got a Godzilla? 100%. <laughs> <laughs> um, what am I thinking? Um, I'm so super excited for Mania this weekend. Um, holy crap, the card. Yeah. For both. Both nights are holy crap. Yeah. So I'm 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 super excited. You at for media? Yeah. How excited are you? How excited? Yeah, between like one and ten, with ten being the highest. Uh, how about like (laughs) twenty? Wow. Yeah. I I know. I think I think last minute was good, but I feel like this like build is like what's gonna happen. What's like this feels like again? It's a fortieth. It feels big. Exactly. It's especially the 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 inclusion of the the tag match with Roman and Dwayne and uh, Cody and, and Seth. Like 
out of the flip and blue. They yeah. got matches. They got title matches that are happening the next night, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah. Wow. What the hell? Yeah. Like Cody Mind and blown. Reigns are basically gonna be in a main event both nights. Like, yeah. But so, so now I'm wondering, I mean, God forbid Dwayne doesn't, you know, end the show, but you also have Rhea and Becky. So do you think? I so think with Rhea and Becky? that's going to be main for night one. I know. If, Wait, you know, that Rhea and Becky's main, main no, event the, for night the, one? No, the tag match is going to main. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I definitely. think if that match wasn't a thing, I think they would main. But um, I think The Rock's pulling a TKO card and we're like, eh, I'm going out last. But no, I think it, that deserve, I, it did deserve the main event spot. But Well, I, no, I think it's probably, yeah, it's going to open night two. I think I think Jimmy J. I'm pretty sure the card, they're night one. And Bailey EO's night two. I think it would make sense to have one on each show. And I'm pretty sure Becky Rhea's night one. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'll see that. Huh? I don't no, they're, they're definitely night one. But I, I honestly, for, for a while, I thought it was going to be them main eventing because um, Hunter on, I think it was Instagram or on a video or something, was saying how Rhea was main eventing at, um, oh my God, what was the show in Australia? Elimination Chamber. Thank you. Um, how she main eventing there and that bigger things are coming. I'm like, well, bigger things are coming. Maybe she'll do it Mania too, but no. no. I, I stand corrected. So you're right. R Rhea, Becky is night one. And as it shows, it's Rock Romans versus Cody. Obviously. That probably is going to be, yeah, I could see that being the opener. And what stinks is that, cause, well, yeah, you, well, you have Gunter, Sami Zayn, which is going to be a good match, but I don't know how much he's, yeah, Jimmy and Jay's night one. She like, that like, has so Jimmy, much. Jimmy, I think feel like Jimmy and Jay, like opening mania with Jay coming out, the whole crowd going. Yeah. I'm like, yes. I think that's your opener for night one. I think that's and the six pack ladder matches in, is night one. Okay. Bianca, you know the Bianca Jade the Naomi match. damage control, and then Rey Mysterio Dragon Lee Santos Dom Mysterio match. So, yeah, I mean. Probably the tag matches are in the middle, all three of them. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so the only thing stinks is that Gunter's match is going to kind of get buried a little bit in the mid card. Yeah, and so it, and one of one of this these two matches is not going to be is going to be in the mid card. One of Rhea Becky or Jimmy J is going to end up having to be in the mid card. And what is your cool down match of that? Is that going to be? Dom. For me, that's Dom Ray Santos. Yep. I feel like that's so last second. Like, what's my smoke break match? Uh, hold on, I'll tell you right now. Let's see. <laughs> when, when am I taking Jackson back out? I I hate to say this, but no, I don't want to say this. Are you no, I'm just, the no. Six women? No, because the honestly, I know it's going to be good. Mysterio, Dragon Lee, Santos, Dom. I know it's gonna be a good match, but I can afford to miss a little bit of that because I know it'll probably go longer. And I feel like Jade is gonna just destroy the three women. Like, like it's gonna be some sort of like hot tag, and she's just Gotta, done. Yeah. Thinking like, who has again before the the main event? Like, who has really long entrances? And I know they show some mm -hmm. pictures. Like, I don't know how like the the ramp. For last year, it was pretty long. Well, The Undertaker is hopefully not showing up this year. Well, <laughs> well apparently he's rumored. They're, they're all rumored. I think that's why. So uh, just random wrestling stuff here. I think that's why they literally, asked, like, they were, like, all for the uh, American Badass character. Because they're like, oh, well, at least we know we're killing off at least, like, three minutes on an entrance and giving him a Harley to ride down to. <laughs> That's when it would mean he came up in the middle of the ramp. He had an ele that elevator. Yep. Like, we're not having him walk this whole thing. Like oh, that was was that the one where they had the people and their hands were like up and it was like some no, like silhouette? Because that was true. I think too. this was uh, the hands one was Jersey was 29. Was it? Yeah, yeah it we were was there. Yeah, like, I it was like one of his last good ones. 
No, I think this was, uh, was it the roller coaster set when he left all his stuff in the ring? Against when he, this uh, Roman match? Uh, I maybe. think whatever media that was, I think that's when he came through the, the, cause he was a hurting puppy. Yeah. That one. Yeah. I, I don't remember, but like, he's just, so, he's had so many like iconic entrances, but like, it's just so long. Like, don't... I, well, that's another thing. When we were watching the Bray documentary, they showed their match and how bright it was. And oh, I was like, I, I forgot about it and how dumb it was to have those two wrestle when it's daylight out. Because hmm. you see Bray's entrance and he had those spooky, like, scarecrow men. And, and Sting. Like, Sting's match with, and like, Sting, Triple H. And I was like, some matches, like, put the, no. Change up the card. This needs to be dark. Also, that was another thing that just, like, talking about. That's, so, just since we talked a lot about Bray Wyatt, which makes me happy, but... We should have done the whole episode on Bray Wyatt's documentary. Um, seriously. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I just, like, I love those dark characters. And there's really not many left. There's only one guy left that I think really does it well. And that's Malachi Aleister Black. Whatever you want to call him. And and just let him free. Let him free Tony. Get him back to WWE yeah. so we can do it. No. I think he's contracted Please. to 2025. I think he's gonna be there for a while. But yeah, there's no yeah. spooky. Remember when Judgment Day first came out with your with your man, and they were supposed to be all spooky. <laughs> and yeah, like... see how well that worked out. <laughs> yeah. Have you been... so, Lisa? You're a notorious Edge Adam. Have you been following? He's on. Well, I don't know if he's on tonight. Have you been following him in yeah, AEW? On Collision, he had that match with Matt Cardona. I I honestly haven't been. I mean, I've been following via social media, but I haven't been watching. I'm I couldn't get into AEW, mm -hmm. and even with him there, it's it's interesting. So know, what you're me, saying is to Ed's point, he's not a needle mover. Not there. Oh, I got her! I got her! Winner! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Because I don't know, it's just with AEW, I feel like it's trying to be ECW in a way. It's very, very hardcore. Like I see the the matches that I've been seeing have been very, very hardcore, especially the one between Edge and Christian, Adam Copeland and Christian K. Oh, whatever their freaking yeah, names are over there. <laughs> Edge, he's always Edge. I'm sorry, but um. <laughs> No, it, it's rather violent. And as much as I love those days and I miss those days, it's now like, all right, I kind of need to tone it down a little bit. <laughs> so you I think need my you're wrestling. Bleeding, like, I don't need. So you're kind of of the, similar like the punk's philosophy. It's like, why is everyone bleeding just to bleed? You know, why are you bleeding just to bleed? Mm -hmm. Moxley. Talking to you, Moxley. I know. Dean Ambrose. <laughs> Who was it that said he's probably bleeding somewhere right now? Yeah, that was the other week. <laughs> 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 that, I, need to, I need to find that clip and like clip it and make it like a, a video spot for the show. <laughs> Mox is probably bleeding somewhere right now. Just clip Ed's Ed's <laughs> call. Yeah. There's so many they catch it every time. Every time he goes to like hit the gig or cut himself, the camera's like right on it. I was like, you're not doing this very well. Like the camera, the camera is so crappy sometimes. There, I don't know. Like I said, like I want them to do good because I want everyone to have jobs and everyone to make money doing what they love. But yeah. you know, they gotta kind of get it together a little bit. But I agree with you. Sometimes mm -hmm. the the blood and the stuff is, you know, like we said with the Cody stuff. Like WWE using it sparingly. It's like, oh my god, Cody's bleeding. That was huge. But it's just a Wednesday night for AEW. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It loses its impact. Mm -hmm. Delise, what else are you thinking? Any, any, any other last comments before we let you go? Um, nothing really, other than I'm really, really excited for this weekend. Yeah, and, I And, um, yeah. <laughs> the fun house comes to life. Lisa, until yeah. next time. Bye. Love ya. You are now cut off. <laughs> I like you saying that. Your water bottle and Godzilla are getting a little crazy. To me. Yeah, I know. I know. Right You're drinking there. too much of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lord. That being said, 
Well, we had one. Are you? Were you? We, we one more. Oh, I said two. Oh, forget, forget. <laughs> She's me. not good at math. I math guess, is hard. Uh, man, I was in the office all day. I drove two hours. I'll throw it back up if anyone else wants to call on. But sorry, we, sorry, we gotta sorry. Have, usually, last but not least, he usually leads off some of these shows. He keeps us honest. He does. Because he tends to be, you know, not diluting himself, his memories with I know. alcohol. I know. I'm, 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 I've been a dick. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling into bed after this. We need to think of a better name than sober as an adjective for this person. <laughs> Statistician, maybe? But we're going to bring him Scholar? in. We're, we're, Scholarly? Can you throw that around one day? Rogue scholars? Road scholars? You're a road scholar? Uh, yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, we bring him in. The one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend. Steve! Steve! Mr. Polacco, what a pleasure it is to be <laughs> with you today. I've been Super a kick party for many years, going back to the Aldo Montoya days. And... <laughs> you didn't recognize me without the mask. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wish him well, and you know, hopefully, we'll be able to get to talk to him, uh, you know, down the road. But obviously, health is most important. So, best of luck to him. Exactly. But we're again, we're making the most of it. It's WrestleMania week, so this is the fun week where we just get to, as wrestling fans, enjoy it all. Right? Like, mm-hmm. there's good pro- programming across the board through all the companies because everyone tries to maximize on it. So. Why not? <clears throat> yes, exactly. Uh, I unfortunately I have freelance work to be doing tonight, so just an Arizona iced tea for me. Classic. Something different. Yeah, a Long Island <laughs> Arizona iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> Give me time. Yeah, if I if I if I have problems with it, that's what it's going to come to. <laughs> There's still that drizzly thing, right? They deliver. <laughs> Actually. For like not uh, in New Jersey, like not for another like I think maybe like another week they have left. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay. Too late. Get sponsor. We get a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I know, I'm not used to having opening acts, so. I know. I know. I know. What is it like now being in the closer caller role? Yeah. Oh my, <laughs> the pressure is on. Seriously. You build up the reputation. Oh. Oh, every everybody did a great job except for that blasphemy about AEW trying to be ECW. <laughs> there, I I, I kind of get the comment with like certain things. What's interesting is actually, you. This is why I love having it. It just brings up so many things. So today, I looked on Twitter and Paul Heyman was actually, I think it was Paul Heyman came out and made it and had an interview where he, he basically was like saying how a lot of, of the AEW stuff is, I don't want to use the term like ripping off because like the bad, but is Inspired deriving from, yeah, by. yeah. The inception was ECW. Like one of the things he used and it was true. It was like the, the whole lights out entrance or debut. He's like, that was an ECW thing. And that actually 150%, he's a hundred percent right on. Like, we talked about that. yeah, like you just, the lights, blackout. He brought up the Brian Pillman one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, just like, that was a great example. I forget what else he had on that tweet, but that was the one that just stood out to me. I was like, no, he's he's right. Like, just the way that they bring along wrestlers and things like that. It was interesting that he he said that he was so kind of open about it. Anyway, go on. Sorry, Steve, to cut you off there. Oh, that's okay. Um, First of all, Uncle Eric says hi. Yes. (laughs) Uncle Eric. Or Easy E. Where's he this evening? He's, I know, mysteriously MIA. I don't know. I spoke. I spoke to him yesterday. So ah, I know. I know the the conglomerate. The regulars are all gathering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the regulars. <laughs> I didn't. I did not watch the uh, the Bray documentary. Uh, but uh, what I haven't heard anybody mention. What I did see is the the post credit teaser. At the end of that, oh, yeah. yes. I don't know if we wanted to spoil. <laughs> I know, that. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Uh, uh, I want to talk, but like, I don't know. Should we be like spoilers if you don't want to talk about it? Like, yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Spoilers if you don't want to hear it. You can drop off if you haven't watched the Bray Wyatt documentary. We have some some people in here, some some new listeners that have kind of popped on. You can't stay here. I'll do so, it inside. Bye. Yeah, if you if you don't want to talk Bray Wyatt's documentary, 
But if you are new here and you just popped on, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, all that stuff in the bottom. If you want to call in, we, we still have the lines open for a little bit, even if Steve's still on and still Steve's one We're of the best into it. of all time. But anyway, go ahead, Steve. No, I, I just thought that, well, um, I'm sorry. Are Can we spoil it or, or not? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we, we, no yeah. more spoilers. Leave. Five, four, three, two, one. Steven Spoil. Yeah, no, I was under the impression that, uh, you know, that thing got enough press that, you know, it did. It was really nothing to spoil at this point. But, uh, yeah, it, it looked like a, a big teaser uh, for the return, probably the Monday after, of uh, Uncle Howdy slash Bo. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what's int- – so I call it literally – someone uh, from work actually – Re- pop me up and we were talking about it and he's like did you see it did you see it yet and i was like no but i bet you that it's gonna lead to some sort of bo dallas return because they wouldn't hype and promote it that much if there wasn't some end result aside from it just being released like maybe yeah you're gonna get a lot of you know eyeballs on it being just released wrestlemania week and everything else and you know bray wyatt's name value but like i felt like all these documentaries, there's always something to come. What's next? Like what, you know, there's a book or there's, you know, whatever they're doing, they're coming back doing a tour or whatever it is. So I felt like there was going to be something. And and I just, the only logical thing aside, the only thought person I thought might've showed up was Micah, his sister. Like I was like, maybe she does something and gets like maybe back into the industry. But I I always felt that Bo was going to have some sort of, you know, really prominent, like he was going to come off looking like, because all those documentaries, there's always like one, one or two pre- people that they always try and promote as like the main star. And you know, is going to come out of that as the breakout star, like just on like documentaries, like Netflix, um, the OVW one, I forget what it's called now, but like Hollywood, Haley J, you could tell the whole, or Hollywood, Haley J, whatever she's talking about. And uh, you could tell the whole documentary, they were promoting her up and they're following her around. And granted, they're following her around, but there was like three people that were following around. But you knew that the she whole, the yeah, like Al Snow's, you know, one of the guys, you know, Al Snow's time's up. Like there's always the one breakout star they're trying to get over. Do you want to say, I don't know, Stephen or Nick or me, or do you want to say like what actually, what the end post credit mm. scene was? Uh, How can you, de- how can I describe that? I mean, it was, it looked like one of the old uh, Bray teasers mm. um, yes. with the with the fast 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 cuts fast cuts and the the buzzing noises and it, uh, his back is the distorted the- yeah the distorted yeah, the, the screen a- yeah yeah and then the sil- the silhouette of the guy in the top hat um, yeah. you know uh, relating to uh, Uncle Howdy so uh, yeah. So they only quite a few seconds, right? Yeah. So they had the, the, the lantern, they had it went out and then it was dark and then it flickered, 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 turned back on. And then you see the silhouette of Uncle Howdy, which is actually in the documentary, which I didn't know that Bo said it was like it was like a recurring dream of this figure that Wyndham had growing up and then drew yeah. him out. So I was like, well, that's a little creepy to dream of that as a little kid. Well, no, I mean, like, all his ideas are, are really, like, crazy creations of, like, the mon- like, like kind of like the monster verse of, of everything. So, you know, it's not a surprise. But, yeah, like, what I'm curious to see, though, is how, like, this character, like, if they're going to, well, we're probably going to now bring him back. How is that going to, like, it's a dark character. How is that going to play into everything? Because, like, like, Bray is, you have to be of, a, like, a mindset to do that. Now, I know... Taylor, Bo, and Bray, like, were, were so close that he said, like, they loved everything. And even on that documentary, they they did a, was it like, a, not a haunted house or something like that where they went on, Oh, like, they were looking for cryptids. Yeah, like, so, like, things like that. So, I guess they're into the same types of things. But, like, there's also, again, no one's going to be Bray Wyatt. Yeah. So, I don't know that, like, yeah. oh, I'm just curious how after the initial presentation of this character in the opening months I'm just, i don't want it to turn into something like disrespectful like it has to be like a nod and a wink but i i want it to be something different like i don't want, like pictures of like 
I don't know, like bright in the background. I'm like that would feel icky. Like like a nod, but something. No, I don't think they're gonna do like that. But I just I I'm just worried that like. Like I said to you, I I would feel better. It's in the hands of despite how I feel the comments he had on the thing, I feel better with like Triple H being there than like with Vince well, oh, like, yeah. being in control. I think there's more of a chance for it to be done correctly. I just would want it to be respectful. It's fair. And what do you think, Steve? Deep. Yeah. <laughs> well, moving on. Speaking of Bo, uh, where's Liv been? Actually, I don't know. She hasn't been. I mean, look, it's pretty clear that they've been setting it up that she's going to be involved involved somehow in the in the Rhea Becky match, but she hasn't been on TV in the last couple of weeks. I don't know if they're just waiting for her for like she'd be like Rhea's next opponent like after Mania, or could she be a turn, a where a random turn? I'm thinking if she's not going to be part, of, if she's not going to be a third participant in the match, like I thought was going to happen all this time, then, you know, she's going to end up costing the loser, uh, uh, the match, whoever, whoever they, whoever is going to lose. So at this, at this point, I think that's going to be Becky. I know we'll, we're saving that for Friday, but I, I just thought they'd be building that up some more over the last couple of weeks. And she just hasn't been around. And not, not only that, there's, there's been no news. She's just been off TV. Have, right. we, have we not seen her since her and Becky had that match? There was the one exchange they had backstage uh, before uh, the Becky Nia match, and that was it. That's been that was the last time, and that was two month uh, two Mondays ago. Unless I unless I'm forgetting about something. Yeah, I can. I don't remember anything like that. Um, I'm trying to remember. I, I'd just be interested to know, again, like, yeah, maybe she is the next challenger for it, like, just to keep to keep it fresh and keep her momentum going. Yeah. Um, it's Yeah, because it's tough. Like, I, I always feel, the, that's why thing. Backlash, yeah, the, the first pay-per-view after WrestleMania is always so weird because, like, I always felt like Backlash was kind of well, the traditional one, but, like, when that happened, it was always a weird situation where, like, I don't know, it, it's either a carryover from the feud from WrestleMania, in which case then you didn't blow it off at WrestleMania, or then you're starting a new feud, but then if you want someone to have momentum, right, for only a month, they're not going to have as much momentum because, you know, a lot of people, like, lose. So, like, that, whoever challenges the champion after that, like, it's kind of, like, a tough spot. So, like, kind of your point, you like, maybe lives the best person now because like she can eat a pin, keep the momentum going for, for Ripley and not, mm. you know, kind of mess things up just keep everything moving in order. And then until her storyline, I don't want to say resets, but resets to the point where she can gain momentum and be a credible challenger to a title. Mm. So I just kind of feel like Louise is her rumble return. Like she hasn't done anything. No, yeah, setting up. Well, Naomi team. hasn't done anything. She's in the tag team. Celia and Steven. They've been setting up. They've been setting up the storyline, and she has had, uh, she has had some some decent matches along the way. Well, she might be someone. She, like, there's a couple people that like after WrestleMania are probably poised for more. Like, I feel like Ricochet is is they're setting him up to maybe be the the foil to Judgment Day. Like, I feel like the. Uh, I almost called them Alpha Academy, but not Alpha. The Creed Brothers mm. are going to be a tag team that's going to be uh, like built up big time post WrestleMania. Um, obviously, Jade is going to get that big build post WrestleMania. So there's a lot going on. Um, I think they just keep people kind of on the back burner right now as they like they don't want to lose any heat, but maybe try and keep them a little bit in the periphery of TV and kind of going from there. Mm. But. Okay. Have they announced Backlash? Like, what's the May pay per view? I mean, oh, Clash, Clash of the oh, Clash of the Castle. There you go. It's not. That's later, right? That's like the July pay per view. I thought that was June. Okay. Then is Money in the Bank July then? 
Because then they had the Berlin show. And then don't they have a France show? Is that the May pay-per-view? The one in it's France? Backlash France. Okay. Huh. Uh -huh. I kind of like that better. <laughs> May 4th, Cinco de Mayo weekend. Yeah. All right. Then they have Women's Bash at the Berlin. Because everyone's, the... saying... everyone's saying that Gunter will main event that show because it's in Berlin, Austria. Because wasn't ex whatever his promotion in Germany? Or is it just Austria? I don't know. I think it's Germany. I don't know. But they have a lot of, like, um, kind of back half of the year, a lot of um, outside the U.S. PLEs. Yeah. It'd be, uh, it'll be interesting. So, Steve, before we let you go, any, any last words before uh, – Will you leave and we, we talk to you again probably on Friday. I'm sure you'll call back in. Yep. Uh, two uh, two quick things. One, I haven't heard anything about a women's battle royal. For like like an Andre the Giant. Yeah, I don't, did, I don't think they did one last year, did they? No. They, I don't think they ever did. I, no, I, don't they have. I, mean, I think they kind of, they were, because remember they wanted to name it after Moolah and everyone's like, don't name it after Moolah. And they had like a like maybe two or three and I feel like that's died out. Hmm. And the other thing is Friday. I think it's a good idea. To, I think it's a good idea to have Friday be a panel show. Interesting. Interesting. Like, like on Around the Horn or or that Stephen A. Smith show, only with nobody yelling. <laughs> well, there there oh, like will be yelling. Show? Yeah, like our show. I think that's. I'd be that one. Everyone can do fiction. Why not? Yeah, every yeah. You're all welcome. Everyone's welcome to come on. Like that's kind of the idea. It's like everyone comes on. Shoot the call in, like go through. We can be like Hollywood Squares, and everyone gets a little square. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, really you, you can hit the mute button. I know. Uh, I know some some people on this might need the mute button. I don't know. I'm not mentioning any names. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's an interesting idea. It's just kind of yeah. We'll, we'll look at that. Uh, that will. We'll, hey, listen. If we get enough people calling in, hey, absolutely. I just think it'll save uh, time rather than anybody who calls in just going down the whole list again. And we're go you're going through the whole list about, you know, yeah, multiple times. This way you can just do it one at a time and Fair everybody's point. already there. Fair point. In the interest of everyone's time. You're I like giving that. us a lot to think about. I know. I, I know, Steve. It. You've been you're drinking. You've given us a lot. To think. I watch a lot of TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll try. Well, yeah. Throw that there. Let us know. Hey. Hey, this is going up. Do you want the, Yeah, do you want to be one of the squares on the panel? Let us all know in the comments below. Well, Steve, it's been a pleasure as always. Any last thoughts before you go? Or Likewise, we... Google Sheets awaits. Thanks, folks. <laughs> Have fun. Steven! As always, a blast when Steve calls in. I know. He's... Uh, Lisa wants in. Uh-oh. The fun house is joining. You're coming alive. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> they won't go back in the box. <laughs> I know. It's like Mercy's head poking out of the box. Oh, and they ate Rambling Rabbit. Uh, unbelievable. Rambling Rabbit, who would that be? Ugh. Which Flyerfly Funhouse yeah. character are you? That's the question that oh, we God. will leave tonight. With. I'll, I'll be Huskis the big boy. That's, oh, that's I will be Huskis. I'm probably Huskis. Maybe I could be right. No, we need to make up. a quiz. It's like one of those like seventeen magazines. Oh God! <laughs> you say this to a boy, like you're Abby. If you say this, you're. We, we need to, we need to create that and then sell that to WWE as like a some sort of I website to, add on. They came out with the plushies of them. I wanted the a rambling rabbit one, and it sold out before I can get one. Mm. And that made me sad. But I well, digress. Maybe, maybe one one Christmas Santa will bring it to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll find now it we're on turning eBay. Into rambling rabbits. Anyway, that being said, it's been a blast. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I know impossible. this started off on a completely different note, and you all, some of you, maybe all of you, joined us on a completely different intention on what today's show would have been. But that's what we love about. You all, that's what we love about the show. We can make the most of it. Stick it in. Every Friday night at 6, we always talk about wrestling. Tonight was a special WrestleMania week edition, so we did it Wednesday at 6 to start. But we're back this Friday at 6, so join us again, and please participate. This was so much fun. 
So we love when we hear we from love everybody. Baseball. So that being said, uh, again, if you're new here and you stayed with us this long on, on a different, on a normal show, but a different show, but a fun show, regardless. Be, yeah. Make sure you do the old like spike, hit the Samoan spike on the like button and subscribe. We do shows like this every week. So we want to see more of you. That being said, you don't have to go home. But you can't stay here. Bye.